Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. You see, character should be a focus for you. Pay attention to your character. It should be a major focus for potential investors or for people that want to relate with you when it comes to life. Pay attention to your character. Pay attention to how you manage small things. Pay attention to how you manage little opportunities. They may be small, they may be little, but you see, pay attention to it. A lot of people want to rise, but they are not paying attention to the small things. Life. Hallelujah. We need to pay attention. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We need to pay attention. There are things that God wants me to pay attention to. Church, are you hearing me this morning? Hallelujah. There are things we don't pay attention to then we'll get into trouble. We'll get into what? We'll get into trouble. And there are trouble you can avoid. There are problems you can avoid. Why? Because you have the wisdom of God. You have the knowledge of God. And without God's wisdom and God's knowledge, you can make progress. I like us to look at Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, he said, Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Hear ye words, children words, the instruction of a father. Instruct if you're going to build according to the will of God. Instruction. There are people who don't like instruction. But you can't truly get to the top without instruction. I want to say that again. I said there are people, they, but you can't get to the top without instruction. You are built by instruction. The future of your vision is secured by instruction. There is what is called divine instruction. A divine instruction is an instruction from God. It is a kind of instruction that God expects you to apply in respective of what you're going through or where you are in life. He wants you to apply that instruction. It's called divine instruction. And there is an instruction that shows up in form of a counsel. And someone looked at you and said, I don't like that guy you're working with. And to you, you may not see anything wrong with the guy, but this other person is seeing something wrong with him. The reason for cancel is for you to secure your future. That's why cancel is given to people. There are a lot of people today that have regrets in life. They never listen to cancel. They never listen to instruction. Oh, I'm a big boy. Nobody can tell me what to do. But you can hurt yourself. Hallelujah. I'm the senior pastor of this church. I don't normally use that word most of the time. But I just, for the purpose of illustration. But there are people who work together with them. They said, okay, we can do this. It's okay. 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 If that way works best for us, okay, let's do it that way. Just that you're a leader doesn't mean we have to take everything you say. You have to give people an opportunity to contribute. A wise leader listens. 
Because by listening, you make right decision. A wise leader listen. By listening, you make. If you don't listen, listening and observation is strategic for making quality decision. Listening and observation is very strategic in making quality decision. Listening and observation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listening and observation. And you see, sometimes praying with such observation can lead to error. Can lead to so many issues. I'm telling you, he's just praying and praying and praying, but he's not observing. Is that the way I'm conducting my life? Is it that people cannot trust me? You know, there are so many issues when it comes to life. There is how a person will carry themselves, they lose trust. I'm telling you, they lose trust. Nobody could trust them. And let me say this to you, you become rich when you can be trusted. I said, you will become rich, watch my words, when you can be trusted. Once you can be trusted, people, heart is open to you to deal with you. Betrayal is one of the offense of life. You can't betray someone and is, is willing to work with you. There are many things we can tolerate in ministry, but we don't tolerate betrayal. True, we don't tolerate this. You know why? A man who betrays you can do anything against you. So you got to be watchful for that. Maybe somebody had a meeting with you and said, I want this thing to stay. And then you went to the street and licked it. You are just closing your doors. Am I teaching anybody anything here this morning? Eh? You are just closing your doors. You have started closing the doors. Why? The instruction is everything was said here will stay here. If they said everything said here will stay here and somebody called you on phone, what did they say? Oh, nothing really. I don't think it passed. Thanks to you. Because the instruction is, well, let it stay where, oh, but you have started bridging what is called trust. And you see, if you can't be trusted, you can't be favored. People don't know this. Favor works with trust. Most people that will favor you in life, especially when we talk about great favors, there are dimensions of favor. Great favor. That favor comes as a result of being trusted. I trust this guy so I can do this thing with him. And trust is one of the greatest things anyone can give to you. Trust. Because once you're trusted, it means you've been given a platform. And you don't try with it. Many years ago, my pastor used to be alive. Some guys came to look for him. So I was with him. I don't know the guys. So he don't behave as if you left my office. If anybody has anything, just mind your business and be going. You know why those guys came to ask him for money? You know, people are trooping in as if he's God. <laughs> so he said, just, man, I have made up my mind. As I was walking, my face changed. As I was coming, everybody, my face changed. I was going. If any of those guys have lifted up their voice and say, what are you talking about? Because I was told but the repute, yes, yes, I just left his offices there. And the person didn't want to see that fellow. You see, when you breach trust, it becomes difficult to grow. Because there, there is someone God will put in your life right now. This person has a potential to make you see more people. So when you lose that trust with that person, how do you see the rest of the people connected to that network of uh, associates down the line? You can't get to them. Because where you want to get to, there is somebody who knows the place. 
And by you hooking up with this person, you can get to all of those places. But then you betray trust. It's going to be difficult for you to grow. That's why people are stuck in life most of the times. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you seen Jesus heal somebody and say, don't say anything about it? <laughs> huh? He said, don't say anything about it. Don't say anything about it. If you can be trusted, you have so much to receive in life. So much. So much. You have nothing to do with that business. Because he has trusted you. He said, please, I know you don't know anything about it, but this guy will teach you in two days' time. Eh? You just learn it and do it. He is giving you a platform. And you are to make over close to 10 million bucks out of it. But it was his contact. Then the person made the money and never went back to the contact. No, you go back and say, ah, look at what happened. Oh, that place you sent me to. This is what they did. This is what they gave. But you know what some people do? They run with the money. They even go to a point of blackmailing the one who lead them to the place. You know what they're doing? They are pulling down the bridge. This is why they won't be able to cross over. They'll be drowned. And trust you. I said God can use you by wisdom when manifest trust. How do we manifest trust? By what? By wisdom you manifest trust. By wisdom, your manifest trust. And this is how you begin to make progress with life. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, he said, Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. Attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. I give you what? What do I give to you? A good doctrine. For, for, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Why was he the only beloved? This guy knew how to manage affairs. The problem is not promotion. It's, it's, the question is, will you be able to manage the process that leads to the promotion? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody gave you his phone number. And, and then you went and exposed the detail of the information. What are you doing? You're losing the relationship. You're losing the relationship. You, you've started losing it. When you're walking into people's lives, try to know their rules. Wisdom was said, know the rules. What does this person detect? What does he, what does he hate? What, what, what put, turns them off? What makes them? What turns them off? What do people do that make them to shut down, to close their mind and they don't want to relate anymore? You got to know that. Especially if it's a relationship that, that has potential to accelerate your vision. You need to know that. Place of opportunity. To a place of opportunity, but you betray yourself. <laughs> you go to the place of opportunity, but you are the one who betray yourself. Because of your inability to manage Vital informations. Vital words. Vital informations. And it takes wisdom to manage those information. It takes wisdom to manage what you saw that you're not expected to say. Huh? It takes wisdom. Somebody gave you access to his 
house, to things around you. It means a lot of trust. So much trust. Hallelujah. You, you, you keep people things the way you saw it. You take permission from people before you use their things. You don't allow familiarity to take the place of principle. Otherwise, you're bridging the relationship. Am I teaching you wisdom today? Huh? You don't allow familiarity. Oh, this person is very close to me. He loves me so much. He plays around with me. But watch the lines. Don't let familiarity make you do what you're not supposed to do. Otherwise, you'll be closing the door against yourself. Hallelujah. Have you seen some people? They are around someone. They are going to have the money. He's not even talking to them. And another person came. They are writing checks in millions, just dropping. Oh, just do it. Don't bother about having all the war about it. Just do it. I'll stand with you. But people are around him in suffering. You know why? They don't know how to assess the person. Some people are like code. You need to learn to unlock them. They are like a code. There are, there are policies around them. They may look simple before you, but there are rules around them. They are smart. They are watching you. They are watching what you're doing. No man can't trust that life. Forget that life. Wow. It was supposed to be a business opportunity. Forget it. Forget that girl. No, no, no. You can't do that kind of thing with that girl. She's not a serious person. You can't do that. Well, over the period of time, They've seen him in a position where he cannot be trusted. Hallelujah. Wisdom teaches you to make positive character a focus. Wisdom teaches you to make positive character. There are people you have to go back to to say thank you. To say what? To say what? A lot of people don't have say. You know, when I look at some people, I used to wonder, what is their problem? There are people who stood with you. There are people who have stood with me in ministry. They have given things. They have gone extra mile. I still have a couple that not here. And she, this guy, and the wife work. They work in a com- different companies. And almost every week, almost every week, he would send me no less than 200 or 300,000. Almost every week. So, wow. So after a while, he lost his job. Then I was worried. But I saw he was coping well, things are moving well. So we started talking. He said, Apostle, I want to tell you something that you don't have an idea of. My paycheck is an offering to the ministry. What we use in taking care of our bills and everything is my wife's paycheck. Ma'am, I was. I haven't seen that kind of thing before. You, you know what it means? That somebody who paycheck, he said, we use so, he lost his job there was no sign that he lost the job. Because when people lose their job, you begin to see the signs. Church, is it not true? You begin to see that uh, the job is no more there that used to supply. But I saw that they were moving on things were happening. Then I, I want to know what's going on here. Then he explained. You see, all relationships are not at the same level. Church, are you hearing me? See, you can come from the same parents, but you don't have the same level of relationship with this guy. There is a friend who stick closer than who? Than a brother. How does that happen? 
It happened as a result of relationship. That you have this guy's back. There are people that don't have your back. Bump into a problem. That, see, as you just bump into the problem, they'll just be turning your back. Everybody will turn your back. In short, if you knock their door, the last one will just have or just give it out. They may have money in their drawer, but they don't want to share. But what do you call a covenant relationship? In a covenant relationship, both of you have an obligation. The key word there is trust. Another word is honesty. Another word is integrity. Another word is stewardship. You can't be in a relationship with someone who is not willing to make sacrifice for the relationship. That's not relationship. So there are certain things that God wants to bring us into, but there are basic principles of life. Basic principles of what God wants us to understand. There are many of us that say, God, I want you to take me to the top. But our attitude can never let us get there. Because the attitude keep betraying will betray the relationship. Wow. I'm not helping anybody this morning. Huh? You're hearing what I'm saying right now. So, as you move in life, there are major things. You Most things that God would do in your life, you would do through people. That's it. So, <laughs> if I don't know how to handle people, it means I don't know how to handle my harvest. Huh? If I don't know how to handle people, it means I don't know how to handle harvest. If I'm rude, a saucy, arrogant, it will be difficult to build relationship that will accelerate my vision. We get better by understanding. How do we get better? How do we make progress? How do we win in life? How do we excel in our dreams? How do we become people that God wants us to be? So by understanding, we make progress. And understanding is something you cultivate. Understanding is something you cultivate. See, there is a process to your destination. Don't forget this. I said what? There is a process to what? To your destination. To where God is taking you to, there is a process. And sometimes people don't like process. Oh, Pastor, that's too tough, I beg you. I was having a particular lady. She had a, a radio broadcast. So someone was listening to me in the UK. She went to our site and downloaded some of my teachings and was listening. And she started reproducing the teaching on CDs and was sharing it to people around the UK. So the demand for the CD was so much that she didn't have the money to continue. Then she called me and said, Pastor, I wish you were in UK to do ministry. I could have been very happy. A lot of people want to listen to you. What will it take me to be on radio in the UK? How much will it cost? Also, how much will it cost for me to be on TV? That was the question I asked her. She said she would get back to me. So I just thought in my spirit. If I've asked that lady that question, I have a friend in New York. Let me call her and ask her, what will it take for me to be on radio in New York? So I called her and said, ah, I was going to go to radio. I said, I have a slot. I have one hour radio show I do every Monday in New York. I can spare 15 minutes for you. I said, say, well, don't be kidding. Come on. He said, yes, I'm telling you the truth. I'm also, yes, I'm also, yes, yes. I'm able to do that for you. I said, you see that? He said, yes. Send me your audios. Ah. I said, we have audio ready. Our website is a site that you can download from. She went to the site, downloaded an audio teaching. She sent me across your picture. Did adverts. I wanted to know what will happen. <laughs> Come Monday morning, my voice was airing from New York to everywhere around the world. It was streaming live. 
I went to my wife and said, see, 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 see me, see me, see me, see me, see me. I don't enter. <laughs> I wonder I said. So, she was airing those things, so she called me and said, uh, people like your message. Would you like to be a co-host on my show? <laughs> what are you talking about? That is why I'm here now. <laughs> Every week I was showing up on her show. She was picking me from Nigeria every week. I never knew I was learning how to walk. She wasn't paying me. I was buying my airtime to keep my phone going, the internet to run for them to pick the broadcast. I was doing it. I was willing to do it as long as the broadcast. So I, I did don't. I, I was not. I said, hey, you know, I just shared how much. No, 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 no. I'm not thinking about that. If money is your priority, you miss your purpose. <laughs> I just said something. I said, if money is your priority, you will miss your purpose. But if your purpose is your priority, you will have resources to advance your purpose. If money is your priority. So I was saving her with all my, I was, in short, I was more happier. <laughs> I was even more glad, Sam. Oh my God, what an opportunity. I was glad. You know, someone run to my, met my wife somewhere and said, I'm seeing your husband everywhere. Have you relocated to US? No, oh, where are you? Where not? Where are you? Where <laughs> well, haven't relocated? <laughs> the advert was everywhere. <laughs> I never knew I was learning how to walk. I never knew. I was learning the skills. Because God was bringing me to a ministry of that class. Then I needed to learn how to do the things. Most people are running for, from their training. Because they are not willing to pay the price for their destiny. It will not be given to you. You will take it. There are things that will not be given to you. No. Take it. How do you take it? Through stewardship. How do you take it through diligence? How do you take it through consistency? How do you take it through passion for the vision? You're working it. You're working it when your friends slumber, they are lazy, they have no time. You're working it. I was faithful. How looking for blood from to do what God called me to do? When you are faithful with small things, you are creating a platform for big things. When you're faithful with small things, a lot of people are quick to ask, how much are you going to give me? Don't always be quick to do that. How much are you going to give me? How much are you going to give me? How much are you going to give me? How much? Are going to give me? How much? They, they are money-minded and not purpose-minded. But when you're purpose-minded, money is going to multiply. <laughs> I just said something right there. Huh? When you're purpose-minded, you're willing to work. So somebody, God may have given someone a great vision and then put you close to that person. And he said, you and this person should work on this vision. Stay with him. Work hard on it. That's in, in this vision comes the harvest. You have two options. It's either you look for the highest bidder at that season of life that will pay you more or you are to follow the will of God for your life. But let me tell you about the will of God for your life. The will of God for your life, when you follow it, will keep flourishing. Because at a particular point, there may be dry season. But when you follow the will of God for your life, you're working it. I was ministering for a particular fellowship. I was talking to my wife for 15 years. My friends used to call me. How much those hungry officers used to give you that you have been faithful to them like this? Because there's so many going there to preach to the people. They didn't have much money. But there was something that benefited from that fellowship. Relationship and platforms. There were places I got to, if not for that fellowship, there was no way I could have been there. 
a small place may have a potential for great things. Don't despise it. <laughs> That's a lot of word. <laughs> a small place may have a potential for great things. Don't despise it. Don't. The Bible said, we should not despise little to beginning. Huh? Have you read that before? When this church came to this place, was it like this, at least for people who have worshipped with us for five years? Or it was like that? You see how you saw it when you came? Now some of you will agree with me that the first time we came to this place, the canopy was at the front of that place. And wind will come and just blow it. But I was not bothered. You see, if the process distracts you, it means you have no picture of the future. Wow. <laughs> you get that? Eh? If the process distracts you, it means you don't have the picture of the future. If the process, what God is about to do in this place in the next few years, in the next few months, I was telling somebody that I said, mark your seats. Mark your seat. Because I've seen it. I've seen it. Someone coming a few days from the U.S. sent me a text. He said, I was praying and God just told me you're going to have an overnight growth. Some people just explode. <laughs> they have no clue. You see, there is something about God. When Joseph arrived in Egypt, it was not announced. You know why? He was securing the guy. He was sick. God monitors his destiny. You didn't hear me well. If God has a destiny in a place, he monitors it. This is why you should not be in a hurry to judge your process. You shouldn't show Because this vision will require a season of preparation. Sometimes God wants to take you to somewhere very far, great, but your capacity can't handle it. So the first thing he begins to help you do is called capacity building. What is it called? Capacity building. Helping you to develop your capacity as you'll be able to get to. But a lot of people, what they want is result. But the result that lasts must have an origin. And that is what most people don't like. Just give it to me right now. Give it to me right now. I'm suffering too much. Give it to me. I just want it right now. Let me say this to you. Most things we will get now don't stay tomorrow. <laughs> hey, they got it right now, but you couldn't carry them next week. When someone was asking for money, and you asked him how much? 6000 That gave me a lot of concern. He didn't say 100000 He didn't say millionaire. Was arguing for money. So how much that? It's owing me one five. Whoa! Lord have mercy. Huh? And then there is a fight. Now, if he finally gives out the one five or giving the one five, how long? What is the life of one five? <laughs> I just want to give you some wisdom that there are things you don't have to worry about. You see, one of the greatest things you need to secure is your peace. With all the storm and the wind of with all the distraction and the storm, do what? Secure your peace. If you secure your peace, you will come into supernatural insight and ideas that will change your story. Hallelujah. God will keep his promise. I didn't hear better, amen. amen. I said, God will keep his promise. Amen. When Joseph arrived in Egypt and he was promoted in the house of Potiphar, wisdom told him what not to touch. You know, there are things that is sweet now, but it will harm the person later. This is why you need accountability relationship. Huh? You need what? Responsibility. People that will look at you and say, girl, that thing is not right. Guy, 
that thing is not in line with the word. Accountability relationship are the kind of relationship that help you monitor the process of your vision. A lot of people don't have it. And let me say this to you. Submission is very strategic when it comes to making progress in life. Submission. A great man of God that all of us know. If I call his name, almost all of you know he's in the UX. He said something some few days ago that got my attention. He said he wanted to quit ministry. And he now shared the reason why. He said when he became famous, he had more critics. More people talking about him that don't even know him. And what they are saying is not even through their line. So, he was in his hotel room. was frustrated thinking what he was going to do. Then, the hotel attendants called his attention that there is a lady here that wants to see you. He said, why now? No, I don't want to see anybody now. So he made his way and came down. And the lady looked at him and said, you know, some people will talk to you, but it's very prophetic. Huh? Don't give up. Your ministry has blessed me. Oh, that word is shared. Minister to me. He was looking at the woman. This, that word is shared. You are an encouragement to me. You, you have a great ministry. You're a great man of God. They finished talking. He went back to his hotel room. That woman was his lifeline. Many years, and he has forgotten. He couldn't remember the face of the woman. After many years, ministry have not expanded more. Things has happened. He was thinking about the woman. I need to see this woman. Where was she? Where is she? So one day he traveled, was doing a meeting, and he was signing his book for people. The woman showed up. He said, do you remember me? He said, no. I was that woman that came to your hotel room. Hey! He broke in tears. His lifeline came. When you have a vision, stop looking at things that are not important. Stop paying attention to things that drain your energy. I said what? Stop paying attention to things that do what? That drain your energy. See, the story of your past should be forgotten. There, there are some of you here, I want you to forget everything that happened 10 years ago. Behave as if it never happened. You know why I'm saying this? If you keep that memory, it will keep hurting your focus for continuity. Oh, I wish it was like this. Oh, I wish it. The more you remember, you see, one of the keys to success is the ability to forget what will not help you. One of the keys to success is the ability to forget anything that will not help you. Stop giving attention to things that drain your energy. The marriage did not work out, and so what? The business did not work out, and so what? So things did not work out because in the first place you started it and it was not God. Are there things you started that you're blaming God for? <laughs> Let me share an experience. Now, I'll give you this story. Many years ago, this church used to be at Civic Center Port Harcourt. And one day, the authorities said they want to use the place. So we're trying to beg this man, please understand with us, we're a young church. <laughs> and the man doesn't want to hear that. The man begged the man, God said, like God was said, add your heart to, let him move. It has been like that in so many cases. So the guy had in his heart, no matter how I talk, now I get to realize that the man came from where my wife, the same uh, community from my wife, so we have to even speak language. It's not by language. It's not by language. The language did not work. The man said, move. So give us some few days. A lady came to our church then. And uh, she's a pastor. I said, uh, sister. He 
said, the Lord said I should give you the money and build my house to buy a land. Please repeat yourself. He said, the money, I have some money I kept. The Lord said I should give it to you. As she brought the money, listen, no money. I want to teach you a very powerful lesson here. As she brought the money, I didn't go back to God to ask him, where do we go? Where do we move to? Ask with him. Look for land for me. We carried the whole money, bought a property somewhere. Started building. Young church. Oh, we're building. Wow. Things were happening. You see, if money leads you to hurt you, <laughs> that's a word for someone. <laughs> if money leads you, it will hurt you. But if you're led by the Spirit, your peace will be secured. There are things money cannot do. <laughs> Somebody can give you 10 million naira right now. Three months later, you're bankrupt. Another person may take that money from you. It takes the wisdom of God to manage resources that will stay. Friend, we lost everything in that job. Everything was gone. Everything was gone. The church building, the finances, everything was gone. How do you know a visionary? A visionary is a person with the ability to continue in respective of oppositions. That's a visionary. A person with the ability to continue in respective of oppositions. That's how you know someone who is a visionary. If setback is a distraction to you, it means your passion is not strong enough for your vision. If setback is a distraction to you, it means that your passion is not strong enough for your vision. We're about to marry that season. In short, let me tell you the story. As we are building our church, I told my wife to be there. I said, ah, we're going to marry someone who's not finishing church building. You know me, I'm always finishing church building before I do something. <laughs> I said, when we finish our church building, we'll do that. Now the building has collapsed. Everything has fallen apart. Then I said, wait, let us build it first again. I like God because he does not behave like me. He came one day and told me, he said, go and marry. Stop waiting to complete your church building. And some of you, God is telling you that. Stop waiting to have Rolls Royce. Stop waiting to have all the things you want to have. I'm not talking to somebody here today. So he says, go and marry. Every opposition you have ever experienced in life is in your came for a two reason. Reason number one to test your foundation. Reason number two to test your focus. <laughs> your foundation. You may be having this great marriage that you started beautifully. The marriage started very well. But right now you can't tell what is happening. You're tired, she's tired. We can begin to have revival. We used to have a couple in our church here many years ago. And the lady came to me and said, I want to divorce his husband. I said, why do you want to divorce your husband? No, okay, she shouted with my wife. That she wants. So I get to hear it. I said, ask her, what is the sex life? Their sex life like, oh, I said, no, no, I don't want to talk about that. I said, invite her, bring her to me. She came and said, sister, what is the condition of your sex life? I noticed that church would not like talking about sex. And that is a major problem in many Christian marriages. So I say, hey, he said, Pastor, you know, I'm expecting it's only when I want, we're believing God for baby. I say, listen, sister, sister, listen. I'm more holy. 
I'm the holy man of God. Listen to me. Go and have sex for the next one month. When you have the sex for the next one month with your husband, come back and tell me you want to divorce. After TV, she saw him tell, Pastor. Is the right person being there to bring counsel? Church people are, are one kind of scattered people. Sorry to use that word. Because a lot of us spiritualize everything. Everything will. No, 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 no. The Lord is speaking to me now. Listen. I said, listen. You see, there are things you can't control because God has placed it like that way. When you say, yes, I do, it means devotion, it means commitment. It means diligence. That's why I used to tell people that I'm not yet married. Don't try to have sex. Because when the journey will start, only God will help you to continue. Real life story, I tell people. And this is why you have a lot of sick relationships in church. People like sweeping. You know why? Please, no. I don't want to talk about our side. We will talk about all the side. That's why we are here. Watch this. Wisdom helps you to do what is right even when it's not convenient. I said what? Wisdom helps you to do what is right even when it's not convenient for you. It's not convenient for you. But this is what is right. Wisdom helps you to do what is right even when it's not convenient for you. It helps you to do what is right. There are a lot of people in pains, but nobody can hear the voice of their pain. That's why we'll have a meeting like this. Wisdom will teach you not to remember a past. See, one of the keys to success is the ability to move on. What they call it? The ability to move on. Can you move on? Something has happened that damaged you mentally and emotionally. Can you move on? See, you can live your life after the storm. Life can continue after the storm. You never expected that this was going to happen to you in life, but it happened. So, but you have to move on. You can't stay in your past and create a future. You got to have a move on mentality. Like I told you, I like to work with people. I like to work with people, but if someone walks up to me and says, I don't want to, I will still get to my destination. I have to move on. Moving on should be part of your lifestyle. Being able to move on. Because if you can't move on, you get stuck. Move on. You never expected that it was going to be this way. You told the, the trial on this second relationship was going to work, but it never worked out, and so what? It's time to move on. Let me say this to you. Hallelujah. I said what? Be strategic with your energy. With your life. Learn to love yourself. Part of wisdom is to learn to love yourself. Learn to treat yourself right. Learn to love yourself. Learn to take care of yourself. A lot of people are having issues with taking care of themselves. How do you take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Take care of yourself. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5. Get wisdom. Get what? Oh. He said, get wisdom. Hallelujah. He said, get understanding. Oh. Where this is this? Where does that wisdom? Anybody here? Did I hear somebody say spa? Oh. Of one of the malls. 
They said, get wisdom. Oh, they want to weigh the wisdom. When he said, get wisdom, he's calling you to accept the responsibility for learning. For what? For learning. <laughs> accept the responsibility to know. He said, get wisdom. He said, get understanding. Wow. Hallelujah. He said, forget it not. These are not the things to forget. Wisdom. Understanding. They are not the things to forget. You know why? With wisdom and understanding, you know what to say. You know what to say. You know how to say it. You can be saying what is right, but the way you said it was wrong. How many of you know that? Eh? What she said was right, but how she said it made what was right to go wrong. What she said was right, but how she said it made what was right to go wrong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Feeling me here today. So he said, Get wisdom. He said, You should not forget it. He said, Either decline from the words of my mouth, don't decline from the words of my mouth. One wisdom from who have been through a lot of things can save you many years of crisis. A guy called his spiritual father because one of his spiritual daughters in his church wanted to get married. But he, he felt that the guy that wanted to marry this girl wanted to take advantage of her. So he was like fighting for the girl not to marry the guy. So the guy that wants to marry the girl accused the pastor of dating the girl just to create crisis. So this pastor reached out to his spiritual father. So what do I do in a situation like this? He asked him two questions. Does she bring souls to the It's not even relevant. I don't know what they get on saying. If this person was active, it's not even active. What are you even fighting for? It's not bringing souls. It's not effective ministry, but you are still fighting. You're being blackmailed. It's better to be blackmailed for somebody who is productive. How many of you think that? Huh? Than for someone who is not productive and you're trying to fight. There are fights you should stop fighting. I didn't hear you, man. Well, there are fights. Many of us who just engage in a fight will start fighting. You're fighting. The person you're fighting for is not fighting for you. The person you're fighting for does not even like the fight. He said, please don't fight for me. I like it. And you're still fighting. What are you fighting for? There are things not to fight for. There are fights that is a waste of energy. There are fights that is a waste of time. You're just wasting your time. And one thing I don't like, I don't like wasting my time talking to somebody who is not listening to me. True. I don't like it. I don't like giving cancer to someone that cancer. Uh, it, it makes me to be quiet concerning the matter. You know why? A man who don't place value on understanding will wear you out. This is to all of you here. A man who does not place value on understanding will wear you out. You'll be stressed out. Have you ever cancelled some people and you keep saying the same thing for more than one year but they have refused to change? My dear, Time is resources. Time is what? Time is resources. And you need to save your time. He said, get wisdom. Get what? Get wisdom. And look at verse 7. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. What is the principal thing? Wisdom is the principal. 
That simply means it's the key thing. It's the main thing. If you don't bring in wisdom into your life, you will you will keep hurting yourself all the time. Wisdom teaches not every invitation you accept. Wisdom teaches you where to sit and how to sit. It said, get wisdom. Even in making requests, there is how to make requests. Get wisdom. It teaches you how to sit, how to carry yourself because you have wisdom. Many years ago, I was living with my mom. I wonder I was just standing outside. I was wearing this black this black space. That's why you don't see me wearing space. I'll tell you why I don't wear glasses. Even when people try to dash me glasses, I used to give, sew it out or whatever. So I was wearing this black dim up standing outside. One elderly man just walked up to me and said, come on, remove that thing from your eye. Remove that thing quickly. The man was not my father. I didn't wear it again. Since that day, I don't put on glasses again. Why was I wearing the glass? What was wrong with my eye? Nothing. My eyes was okay. Many of us start wearing things because of fashion. And after a while, our eyes start having problems. Huh? You didn't check it medically to see how fit that thing was. The next thing say, oh, it's like there are spirits in my eye. No spirit in the glass. They were. Remove the dreams. And while he was having those crazy dreams, he came to his pastor. I said, Pastor, they have been chasing me in the dream. I've been having this crazy nightmare. You know? the, the pastor got a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Do you watch Dracula? He said, yes. He said, disconnect it. That's where it's coming from. <laughs> you know, so some people can just wear you are. He said, disconnect. Just disconnect it. <laughs> Stop watching. Because the more you watch that, how can you be watching people drinking blood before you want to go and sleep? <laughs> <laughs> they are killing people, drinking their blood. And you want to go and sleep in the night and hey, don't touch me. He's on the bed saying, Don't touch me. Out of the abundance of his heart, his leg is moving. <laughs> don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> ah, they have gone to kill me. Ah, all the time there's a reaction. Change, change your channel. Have some peace. There are things you open yourself up to. You won't be able to enjoy your life. You see, the, the reason why God is teaching us on wisdom today, you know, when I came to here this morning and um, was like making inquiry in my spirit, we have so many things we are teaching for these 40 days. So he just said, show wisdom. Wisdom helps you to learn how to zip your mouth. It's not everything about you be outside. Some things about you should be about you. You can't confide on someone you know they don't have your back. What's wrong with you? You can't do that. People you don't share your marriage issue with. You sit on Twitter. Sit on Facebook. I thought their own was working. But they told me it's not working. La la. <laughs> you know, you, 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 are, you, are, you don't feel you're talking to somebody. There are people you don't talk to. I was telling one of my guys, if you want to talk, talk to me. Talk to me. There are people you don't talk to. Because if you talk to them, it will be sponsored on Facebook. You'll be shocked what, what somebody, you, and see, let me say this to you. Wisdom will teach you how to see evil and stay away from it. Wisdom will teach you, you saw the evil, but you stayed away. Wisdom will teach you the company to keep. Wrong association will slow down your pace for success. There are people you don't keep company with. It's not issue of pride. It's issue of destiny. Imagine that Joseph arrived in Egypt and he was keeping company with people who don't honor the principles of God's word. Joseph will make it to his destination. Hallelujah. He will even get to his destination. He's keeping company with people that can honor the word of God. Keep company with people whose faith is an inspiration to your vision. Keep company with people whose faith 
is an inspiration to your vision that any time you look at them, you say, my God, I'll continue. I have one of my friends, he's late right now. You know, I went to bury him many years ago. He's a pastor. And any time he traveled from his station and come back to Portacot, just see me, he said, anytime I see you, I'm encouraged to continue. Anytime I see you, I'm encouraged to continue. Anytime I see you. Why? Because he knows my people who did not start from the top, who started from the floor. You can relate to their story. Oh, if this person can be like this, that God who showed up in his life can show up in my life. There are people you don't know their story. I don't like following people that don't know their story. I like relating with people that I see. You saw them. You saw them. You saw things. Ah, I know this guy. It becomes an inspiration. But there are people that their success is intimidating. Because in the first place, you don't know their story. So, you, oh boy, this guy is very rich. Who oh, this, especially people who don't like sharing their story. I've noticed that when people, some people succeed in life, they graduate from telling their stories. Did I say anything to somebody? Yeah. I just said something here. I said, when some people, graduate and enter some levels of life, they stop telling their stories. You know what I like Pastor C? Pastor C have a way of telling his story. And it encourages me. You know what time he came to church here? He said when their church was three years old, at the third year anniversary, they bought one crate of mineral. They started taking to two bottles. After the first round, imagine you know, we brought 24 bottles here now. I will not finish taking. Now we'll start taking the second round. That you should know how many people that are there. Everybody was going back for a second round again. Sister, I need to hold your own. Brother, I need to hold your own. You know, something like that. So when you share stories like that, somebody who has a vision have energy to drive. There are churches you enter your dreams die. Because the way they preach, they make you feel like you're nobody. Ah! After this point, you have no success. You don't know where. No. No. I said no. Everybody's story can be the same. There are people to take them 20 years to break forth. If they hang around with the wrong people, they won't even break forth at 40 years. Because their words will be choking the vision. There are people do, just by listening to them, their word is haughty. With all due respect, there are preachers in this country that don't listen to them. I don't listen to them. With all due respect, you know why? There are ways some people talk like, as if they never suffered. Like my pastor would say, as if they don't go to the toilet. He said, They are the biggest liars I've ever met. That's what Pastor C said. I like people. Who, when they are talking with you, then the, the, the details, they start, they start telling you, at this point, this is what happened. You that is hearing it, sometimes it's not just that scripture. It was that thing he said. Wow. So that was how it was. Eh? That was how it was for them. And then the encouragement comes. Why do you think that God will always tell the children of Israel, I will remember my covenant with Abraham. Why is he remembering it? Trying to let you know there's a place you're coming from. My dealing with you is based on that man's dealing. There are stories of encouragement. There are stories that inspire your faith. You saw the guy. He drove a new car. Wow, I know him. This word is working. And you work for me to work for me. There are people's story. That their story is not clear. There are success I don't admire. Because in the first place, it's not a success. It's a mirage. Your story. Lift up your hands and say, Jesus, you're my focus. All things are possible. Your vision is possible. Your assignment is possible. In the name of Jesus, you can't give up now. I can't give up now. This is a word for someone. I can't give up now. I've come too far to give up now. Don't give up on yourself. 
don't give up on your life. All your friends may have gone. Everybody may have left you. Everybody may have walked away. But honey, there is something about success. The first match Nigeria played. Everybody in this country made those boys orphans. Is you know what one of you did? The talk that was going on was even more than, even people who don't know anything about football was talking. Why didn't you kick the ball? Have you kicked ball before? They talk. People were talking. They meet everybody. Ah. The problem in this country is that if you're not succeeding, you're in trouble. They don't give people a chance to breathe. Though. That is one syndrome in Nigeria. When you are not doing well, you are not fun. You are declared an orphan immediately. They, all people have started denying you. Family members say, my brother, my sister. Do, 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 do. It's quick around here. As they lost that first match, faces, people were burning their face everywhere. I was seeing them on Facebook, on Twitter. They were burning. People were talking. I was, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. How have, you, how have you contributed? That you say, how did you get disappointed? You, did you get disappointed on the ground that you sent them an email encouraging them in the first place? You know, you, you know, when you hear people talk sometimes, you know they have some issues. Then, they had a second match. And they won. It's our country. How? See, how our people, see, why will you live this kind of life? And see, let, let, you see, we got to be careful of attitude like this that will deny people in their downfall, they succeed, who want to be their friends. That's not life. In good times, in bad times, you're there to give encouragement. You, you are our own. We believe in you. Mm, believe in you, wait. I don't know what a particular match many years ago. I can't remember the year. It's called Nigeria Four Ghosts. Maybe some of you will remember. Eh? Four Ghosts. Some of you are off in your TV. What did they watch? What did they watch? What are you watching? People were watch, were, were offing their TV. What are you watching? What are you watching? Are you watching depression or what? And then the boys, they score one goal. <laughs> that one, messy, they messy them. They didn't want it to end like that. They scored it too good. It will end in 40. At least don't try. They scored it all good. <laughs> Be like serious, our people, they don't need to come up on that. Sometimes it gives me concern how people's life controlled by the wave of success. People change his frequency on people like that. Yes. And you know what happened? When they score the four goals, ah, oh, these are my boys. Eh? I know they can do something. <laughs> Somebody, oh my God, ah, people that were outside have come inside. Attitude has changed. This is why you must succeed. <laughs> yeah, this is why you must have infallible proof for these 40 days that these 40 days were coming to church. People's attitude towards you will change. In the name of Jesus, people who tolerate you and just look at you, their approach will change. Be, be, honey, do you know? When you are prosperous, people watch their words when they are talking to you. Oh, they are very careful. Well, what I mean was not what you think. What I thought was uh, that if we have come together, we could have been able. Shut up your mouth, you stupid man. What is wrong with you? Why will you cross the bank? Stop. It's poor. That's why the scripture said endless expectation of all the creation await the manifestations of the. That's why you have to prosper. That's why you have to succeed in life. That is how you have to do well in life. There is your neighbor that have been frowning his face for the past five years. Will just see. He didn't know who was the person. He was waving. He's not waving you. At least he's waving the car. From the guy to get to you. <laughs> the mindset of the 
backfire. The mindset that liberates. That is how you become relevant before people. That is how you become useful before people. People are struggling to do the project. You tear the road and do the project. Ah, it was that man. It was that woman. Yeah, that is how relevant you become. You become relevant when you suffer them. You become relevant. As I round up, hear this. Your destination is settled. Your attitude will take you there. Your destination is settled. Your attitude will take you there. Let me say this to you. Never give up no matter the pressure. Never give up no matter who walk away. You know, there's one I like about life. And, and I like about myself. The ability to continue even when you have no reason to continue. Hmm? Many years ago, I was preaching, and uh, we didn't have this number of people there. And somebody was passing and said, The way you're preaching, as if you're preaching to thousands of people. That's how I preach. It's not the number. Jesus, John Gospel chapter 4, preached to one woman until she left her water pot. Can you do that? You know what it means? Somebody came with a water pot to get water. And then you preach until she left it. It was a hot message. It was, that message was hot. I'm telling you. He preached the woman was sharing. She said, wait. Left, left the reason why she came to the well. And ran into the city. Hmm. You people haven't seen anything before. Start coming at all the neighbors. Come at everybody. I've seen a man. Come and see crowd coming to the well. Because he preached to her. I don't know what happened to some people. When any equipment's off or anything have problem, you know, most of the pastors I know these days, I don't want to use the word RJ. They are too fragile. True. Some people want something go off. They are waiting for it to return back. How can you wait for power to return before you continue to preach? Be preaching. Those that will be hearing you will be telling the rebel. Things that are not important to stop the vision. Things that are not important to distract you. Once you have a challenge in an area, the next person that will feel that impact of that challenge is God. No, that's not how to work. I'll give you three points and I will round up. Number one, never allow how you feel to betray what God has spoken to you. Never, never allow how you feel to betray what God has spoken to you. Don't allow how you feel. That was one Sunday I didn't feel like coming to church. True. Because I wanted to sleep. I said, no, I will come to church. I forced my way out of the bed. I will come. It's not about feeling. Amen. Huh? A friend had a birthday party last week. He added one year and he has been inviting me for all the birthdays. And I have a meeting. Even as I finish this service this morning, I'm, when we got back, we we'll have another meeting I have to do in my Zoom church, you know, online. You know, so I said I will not go. Let him send me the account number. Let me wire money. I prefer to use money to solve problem than to be there. My wife said, my wife said, you go. This man has been inviting you for so many birthdays. This one, you must go. Friend, it took me a lot of faith to wear my clothes. Because my body is saying, mm -mm, you cannot go. I was tired. A lot of faith. I started wearing the clothes. And I have to wear native. Putting myself in order. <laughs> I managed whether the car tango for faith. It drove us to go to the place. As I get to the place, I started looking at my time. Because I cannot stay here more than one hour. Nothing you would do that will keep me here. You know why? I was trying to manage my energy. I was already exhausted. You see, when you are exhausted, 
think refreshing. I'm going to say something about this. In life, when you're pursuing your dream, sometimes you get exhausted. You don't feel like continuing. It's like you are making effort, but you're not seeing progress. That is the point of being exhausted. At that point, now, if you're not careful, it's either everything you've labored for, for all of these years, all of these months, you said, let me just rest. When you are exhausted, take break. Take break by relaxing yourself. Number one, take break by taking care of yourself. Take break by the next one, we don't like to hear it. But it's part of taking break. Go for shopping. Especially when you have some cash. Huh? You just walk up to a place, buy things, something you can choose, something you can drink. Just take yourself out. Just ease yourself with, from the, all the pressure. Just, just uh, see, I want to be by myself this weekend though. I'm by myself. Nobody should follow me to anywhere. By myself. Don't follow me to anywhere. I want to be by myself. He said, why are you going to be by yourself? You're a family woman. You're a family. I said by myself. Didn't you hear what I said? I'm giving myself a break. You go, you sit down one place, you buy your meat, buy, you relax. Then you ask yourself this question. Does he want to give up now? I can't give up now. I've been pursuing this thing for more than 10 years. I need to continue this vision. You finish talking to yourself. The Bible said, and Jesus, very early in the morning, he went out. See, those are strategies to keep yourself. When you're tired, when you feel like things are not working well, take a break. Talk to yourself. Move out from some people and just by yourself, maybe for six hours, for five hours, talk to yourself, refresh yourself. Then you come back to the game again. Hallelujah. That's why they give you a break. In, especially in your place of work. Why? Go and refresh. The next thing you need to understand, that's the last point I want to make. When you are tired, watch what you say. This is very, very important. When you are tired, you're pursuing a dream. You're pursuing a vision. Now you are tired of pursuing that vision. Watch what you say. Why did I say that? When people are tired, the tendency for them to say it's not working is there. Huh? It's not what? It's not working. This thing is not working. This, this, maybe it's ministry. This ministry thing is not working. Nothing is happening. You know, they are complaining. No, if you're tired, watch what you say. This business is not even growing. Eh? I'll put all the money to it. Watch what you say when you're tired. When you are tired, what should you do? Go back to what God said to you concerning that vision before you started it. That's what you do. Go back to praying in the spirits. Go back to what God said to you. Go back to praying in the spirits and get back into encouraging yourself. Praying in the spirit, knowing what God said to you, encouraging yourself. The next point is evaluate your progress. Ask yourself this one question. For the past six months I started this business, have I made any progress? Says, at least I bought a recharge card. Lord, I thank you for that recharge card. The pastor, oh, why are you telling me this kind of thing? No, no, no. I'm trying to give you a reminder list. Thank you for the recharge card. Oh, from that business, you bought a shirt. Oh, God, I thank you for that. For that. Remember things that will make you stay courageous. Remember things that will quicken you. Things that will, that will take you out of that mood of being tired. It happens in ministry. It happens in business. It happens in marriage. It happens, in, a lot of people don't know how to just say, man, I'm tired, but I just want to go back to things like, like what I do is this. I go back to my diaries of the things God has spoken to me, and then I read those things. He told me, he's going to do this in our ministry, he's going to do that. Those words encourages me. Those words strengthen me. Those words keep me on a track of focus. I continue to move forward. You know why? God said to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 6 and 7. He said, be strong and be very what? Courageous. And if you're not courageous, you'll soon give up. Today, I want you to get, become more courageous. Don't give up on yourself. It doesn't matter the setback. It doesn't matter. The, see, your mistakes are good because they have commercial value. 
<laughs> I just said it was so. I said, your mistakes are good because they have commercial value. Somebody said, Pastor, tell me how they have a commercial value. It's time to write in a book on your mistake. Do you know that your mistake will become somebody's solution? This is why I ended up in a bad relationship, so don't do it. This is how my first business failed. Don't try it. This is why I lost my first job. Don't do it. You know, people always want to hear stories of people, stories of what people have gone through, and then in selling that book, money is coming on. I hope you know that. Um, God help you, that book become a New York best time seller. And every year you're having a royalty, you're having things coming out of it. Why? Because out of your pain is coming somebody's landmark. I'm here today to say to you, you can't stop now. You can't give up now. Now is not the right time to give up. Now is not the right time to give up. Somebody say, Pastor, when is going to be the right time to give up? I will tell you when is the right time. But it's not today. It's not now. It's not this minute. It's not this year. It's not 10 years from now. It's not 20 years from now. Stretch the next 50 years and then come back and tell me, Pastor, I want to give up. Then, I may say, I think you have the right to give up. After 50 years. <laughs> In heaven, I said, after 50 years. You go, no, Pastor, all this is not true. I, I want to give up now. Okay, give up. After 50 years. Do you have an agreement? I don't know. I said, all the people have an agreement with me. Let's lift up your hand. Let me see. After 50 years, you come back and tell me, Pastor, I want to give up. Yes. We have all agreed. So, go there. Succeed. Excel. The favor of God is on you. And everything is going to be all right. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. There is a victory with your name on it. There is a victory with your name on it. There is a destiny with your name on it. You are bigger than the limitation. You are greater than the struggle. You are bigger than the affliction. Your life is better than when it started. There is more to you than what you know about you. Your best of days are not behind you, they are ahead of you. There is greatness right inside of you. There's an anointing within you that can bow to the storm. You're bigger than your position. All the distraction that came, look at how you rose up above them. It was because God is with you. There is more to you than what you know about you. Your failures are raw material for the next level of success. You are getting better. You are moving forward. There there is greatness in you. There is strength in you. There is an anointing upon you. You have what it takes to rise. You can rise again. Your dreams can rise again. Your vision can rise again. You can't give up now. You can't stop now. There is a generation waiting for you. There is a nation waiting for you. There is a community waiting for you. You are anointed to do the impossible. You can rise again. You you can build again. You can succeed again. You can get to the table again. You can break forth again. You can have answers again. Your needs can be met again. Receive miracles. Receive increase. Oh, Mashakala Baba. Record of Mashakala Baba. Record of Baba Baba. It's not yet over. It's not yet over. It may look rough, but you're sailing through it. It may look tough, but you're rising above it. It may look like disappointment, but God is turning it around. The years the locusts have eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. I hear God saying, Restoration. I will restore the years. I will restore the months. I will restore the weeks. I will restore the seasons. It's not time to quit. This is a word for someone. You don't have to commit suicide. You don't have to take your life. You don't have to drink a poison. There is a blessing upon you. There is a destiny. What's your name on it? Oh, they betrayed Joseph, but they never stopped his destiny. They arrested Joseph, but they couldn't stop his destiny. They lied against Joseph, but they couldn't stop his destiny. Sister, there may be deception around you, but that shouldn't stop you. There may be accusation against your dreamer, but that shouldn't stop you. There may be storms around you, but God has a plan. 
God has a plan. Your mistake will be a raw material for success. Your mistake, the mistake that look like a setback, God is turning it around. God is turning it around. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. It's working for your good. It's not yet over until you win. There is a victory with your name on it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'd like you to say this after me. Jesus, because of the spirit of grace, you are placed upon my life. I cannot give up. I cannot stop now. I've come a long way. There is greatness in me. There is a future with my name on it. I am rising above limitation. I am a success going somewhere to happen. There is greatness in me. I walk in the consciousness of my greatness. Lord Jesus, your blessing, your anointing, your grace, your mercy is in my favor. From this day forward, I go forward. I break forth. I won't give up. I'm encouraged. I will never be discouraged. I will never be discouraged. I will never give up. I will never stop believing God. I will keep believing. The word of God is true. I refuse to quit on God's will. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. Why will lead people to Christ this morning? If you're watching this broadcast right now, wherever you are and you're watching this broadcast and you don't know Jesus as your Lord, one of the greatest things you can ever do with your life is to come to Jesus. If you're watching me right now and you want to come to Jesus, you want to receive him into your life, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Is Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. You can also watch me on finishworktv.com. Finishwork TV stream 24 7 every day, bringing God's word to people around the world. You can get our book on Amazon. For the things you need to know about your future, it's available on Amazon.com. If you're watching this broadcast today, you want to partner with us, you want to give an offering, this is Sunday service. We can give our offerings together. You can go to finishworktv.com, finishworktv.com, and slash giving. And give as the Spirit of God will lead you. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Until we come your way soon. Please don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Just lift up your hands and let